The following is a conversation between me, Doug Marks, and Michelangelo Badio about keeping passion for guitar playing alive. I'm sure you have found your own solutions for making guitar practice fun, so please explain your ideas in the comments section below because I want to put together a list to share. Now, on to our conversation. Welcome to my podcast. This is uh, first in what I plan to be a series, but we'll see how it goes. This is not an interview. It's not me interviewing Michelangelo Badio. Uh, it's a conversation between the two of us. Today's topic is keeping passion for guitar playing alive. So what do you think, Michael? It's, it's the key element to keep people passionate and motivated uh, to play. At the same time, we all go through periods where we're totally into it, and then sometimes we need to take a step back. So I'm, I'm going to start off the podcast by explaining uh, my experience playing guitar and how it started off so magical. And I remember the first time I was actually in a Boy Scout, Scout Master's home or whatever, and he had an acoustic guitar sitting there, and I couldn't keep my hands off this thing. Of course, I had no idea how to play it, but just strumming the strings. I think we've all had this experience. Uh, do you remember the first time you touched the guitar? I started when I was 10, so I really hadn't played a guitar until my parents bought me one for my 10th birthday. So yeah, I can kind of remember. Hadn't even touched a guitar? No, I don't think so. I, I had no access to guitars back then. They, they bought me one of those cheap Tysco guitars uh, made in Japan, <laughs> right. and uh, I think they paid like $35 for it, and that, that, they thought that was too much. My dad's like, you better learn how to play this thing. And, and uh, you know, he was kidding around, but he was serious in, in a way. And, uh, yeah. and uh, so that's really the first time I ever played is when I had that guitar. And how magical was it when you first started, you know, strumming around, even though you couldn't play a chord or anything else, just touching it and considering yourself, you know, beginning this journey? We, I air guitared it because it was so out of tune and I didn't know how to tune it. It sounded like garbage. <laughs> so I put on some Beatles <laughs> records and pretended I was playing along with them. <laughs> 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 That's great. Anyway, let, let me explain what I have gone through from the first magical experience to uh, I went through a long period of time when uh, I would have loved to have been a great guitar player when I was in junior high and high school, but I didn't find a teacher until I was about, I don't know, 18 or 19. So it was not really fast track for me. At the same time, I learned to play guitar. Well, uh, I was like 12 years old when the Beatles first hit. So we were kind of this generation. I was at the beginning of this thing where there weren't guitar players like there were four years later when you had the experience, you know? So uh, I, I had more of a struggle. There was like one rock and roll guitar teacher in town and this guy was booked up for years and that's why I couldn't take a lesson until I was 18. Anyway, I got into my early bands and in the mid 70s, I was doing a lot of traveling. At that time, uh, I got to the point I was playing six nights a week. Uh, there was um, alcohol and ladies involved, I might say. So when we finished playing after six hours, uh, the guitars went away uh, in their cases, and we partied the night away. Uh, I can't remember one time in the two or three years that I was doing this that we sat around and jammed. Now, you know, people that haven't had this experience can't imagine that because it looks like, hey, you're a bunch of musicians. Of course you write songs, you do that. No. At this particular time in the mid 70s, I turned the guitar into my job. However, I never lost my love for music. And there were always very magical moments. But at the same time, when you start doing something professional, it's easy to get to a point of, I will not do this unless someone is paying me. And I have to say, that is something I've struggled with 
my whole life since then. I spend a lot of time creating lessons and working at lessons and my lessons I think are good because I do recall the magic when I was younger. I do recall the struggle of not having a teacher and all that stuff. So all of this stuff really helped me, but at the same time, it continued this work to put, put a lesson together. Uh, after the lesson is done, I spend way more time actually uh, promoting the lesson, uh, do, answering students' questions and so on and so forth, then playing guitar. I occasionally get back into it to where I'm very motivated and inspired again, uh, but I have to say, I do struggle with it being my job. And recently, I have come to the conclusion of practicing can be dangerous if you do it too much, because practice, in essence, is repetition. It can drive you crazy. Uh, there must be more attention to playing guitar, you know, playing, having fun, uh, not putting the pressure on yourself of, I must practice for 60 minutes today. No, I must pick up the guitar and play something that moves me. And when I don't feel that anymore, I put the guitar down. In this regard, you know, we're the same in a lot of ways. And in this particular instance, I think we're, we're different because my, you know, as people know about me that that know what we hear me talk, I use different sound bites all the time. And I got that idea from my father. And my father used to just, I hear his phrases in my head every day of my life. And one of the things he said is that if you worry about money too much, you can't make it. And, and so with guitar for me, I, I learned very early on that when when I talk guitar, and I still approach this to this day, that uh, there's two there, there's two areas you want to tackle at the same time, music and technique, and you make them it, you it, you you don't practice technique and add a little bit of a song. You you separate them, and then the idea is to merge the technique into the music. Now I started at ten. And I was in a band at 10. I was in bands from the time I was 10 years old all the way up until, you know, the end of Nitro when I went solo. And so literally my whole life. And one of the things that I found that motivated me was we we always played live. I You know, I was one of the guys, I had a keyboard player in one of the bands that between him and I, we used to both book the band, and then it turned out that I was always the guy in the band that was the liaison to the agent. So I was the one booking us, and I got the agents. And But I really genuinely loved to play live, and I really genuinely loved to practice. And I would set up these, like, uh, even now I have these scenarios where, where I set up different routines for myself to practice. But my main one now is I just put on drum programs, 185 BPM, 190, 195, 200, 210. I go all the way up to 250. I was going to show that in the live stream today. And, and uh, But I, you're right about one thing. It's I never like to use the word gigs. It's the music business. It's not the music game. I don't play gigs. I play shows. I, I always thought about it in terms of money, too, because if this is your career, you've got to make money at it. And, and so that was always in the back of my mind. And and the one way I thought to make the most amount of money is to do the best quality work, That that if the quality of work that I could do is super high, the money should come in. And it's the quest. You know, I, I have a saying, you're only as good as the show you did and the one you're about to do. Every time you get up on stage, every time you do anything, you've got to approach it like th this is the one. And, and uh, so the I only lost motivation a few times in my life. Uh, one was unfortunately about five years ago when my mom got sick and died. I had every it was Murphy's law for me. Everything that could go wrong did. I, I just every time I'm turning around, I'm getting hit with something, and I realized I actually outside of a couple of guitar clinics, I didn't practice guitar for months. And one day the light bulb went off. The switch. I turned the switch back on. I said, "Start practicing again," and I never stopped. But in the younger days. 
you know, I, I, I was in a, some successful cover bands and we used to do some originals, but we had a really good singer. Uh, you know, we, everybody in the band could sing. We could do a lot of different styles of music from Earth, Wind and Fire to Jethro Tull and Yes. So we could do all the cool Top 40 stuff. And I really enjoyed playing that. And then on my own, I just enjoyed practicing and working on all, you know, really the stuff I show on Speak Hills. That's what I used to practice. And, and so, you know, that's kind of where my head was at with it. And I, I really never lost the passion for it. And, I mean, you still have the passion for playing, too. And like you said, I think we're, I'm having more fun now than before, uh, even, because I work with only people I like to work with, and I'm playing music I like to play. There's no note police on me. That nobody's saying don't do this and don't do that. And and I made sure uh, very early in my career that I didn't have those note police. I never liked that. I never liked people telling me like, oh, you do this, oh, you can't do this. You know, if I'm hired to play someone else's music, that's one thing. But if I'm doing my own, I have to do it my own way. I can't even. I don't even want to release it. Well, let me just say one thing. You have been very successful at keeping the note police away. True. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I remember you said at one point in uh, Nitro that uh, Jim Gillette was giving you some advice. Do not practice your guitar. Yeah, yeah. He said that for the second album. He produced the second album. He wanted me to sound like Warren. And, and I, you know what? I, I didn't do that, but I actually had to play live in the studio. Not even if you listen to the second Nitro album, a lot of the songs don't even have rhythm guitar underneath the solos. I played the rhythm and lead at the same time, like an old school recording. A lot of Metal Methods students played guitar when they were 15. They got in a band and then life got in the way and... Part of the reason that I'm doing this podcast is to give motivation to those people, ideas for getting excited again. Now, one of the things that has made me excited about playing guitar again is three months ago, I started playing drums. I can't pass the drums without sitting down and playing them. And it has somewhat reawakened those exact same feelings on guitar. And it has taught me... Um, not that I should need to be taught that this, uh, that the guitar doesn't have to be work. You can still, at any age and with as much experience as you have, still have a blast just jamming, uh, being creative, uh, playing things that come to mind. And next time you pass the guitar, you want to pick it up because you're so excited about what you just recently played. How much do you play right now? Uh, I, I know that you're doing a lot for work. You, you are doing the business with Sawtooth, but, but for your own enjoyment, not writing a record or whatever, just sitting down and playing. Well, I, I practice every day, uh, and I have a practice regimen uh, that, that I've I, it's it, it's it, it's based like I was telling you on BPM on sixteenth notes, uh, BPM on a clean and distortion. Outside of practice, you know, practice is repetition, and practice is great for putting the chops together that you must maintain. But I really think for enthusiasm for playing guitar and for it being magical, it's outside of practice. What's it like for you, and how often do you? Do it where it's not practice, where it's actually playing. I it, it's not that much now because I you know the business of music you know like the, you, you use that phrase life gets in the way, uh, you know my dad used to have have a phrase that some people are too busy to take care of business and I never want to be that person but see what what my life is now it's it's so different because uh, when I for example when I in California, I'm playing with this MAB band. We're being creative and working out arrangements. So when I'm out, when I'm home and I'm working, the most time that I have is to keep up my skill. 
And so I, I just come up with, so I don't really spend a ton of time just, uh, just like sitting down and playing and, you know, bring, putting out, you know, bringing out the acoustic and singing, I love you, I love you, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, I just don't get a chance to do that as much. But, but I always. Well, let me tell you, my friend. Uh, we're not that much different. <laughs> yeah, I don't. So, be... so may, I pres may I prescribe for you? Spend a little bit of time today playing guitar, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'll sit outside on my deck. It's 85 degrees and go, ooh, baby, I dig your love. And uh, But I see, I love doing that. But in, in, in my world at this time, at this, it's like I've, you know, a live stream. Okay, we have to prepare for that. Record a song. Okay, I've, that's a creative process. I've got to prepare for that. So everything is creative, but it's channeled more. You know, where where when you know when I was younger, I could just sit outside, living at my parents' house, didn't have many bills, and just strum away and 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 write songs. Where now, when we write songs, it's it's for something. I enjoy practicing and always have. At the same time, I I do feel like that takes away a bit of the magic and the emotions and the things that I was in touch with when I first got started playing guitar. I mean, we all grow up, right? But at the same time, uh, that magic is what got me into it. I mean, just like being in a relationship, why do we even bother? Well, it starts off with a lot of sex from my experience. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what uh, happens with music. But I, I think both of us can agree that that passion and, and love for what we do uh, doesn't stop. One of the things that impress, has always impressed me about you and other people that come in my studio is uh, you walk right for the wall and pull a guitar off the wall if it's my guitar, you'll say, Doug, is it okay if I play this? And of course it is. Uh, but I really admire that you want to have a guitar in your hand as much as possible from my experience being around you. Yeah, it helps. And see, I, I still have the passion. For example, uh, when I practice, like even, say, having a drum program on at 185, what I'll do is I'll practice like just making up riffs and you try to play as long as you can without making a mistake or like having your ideas come out before you can't put the idea from your head, translate it to the fingers. And, you know, it's things like that. But you're right. I always like to have a guitar in my hands. It keeps my fingers. Uh, it's almost like being on a treadmill, you know, and reading something, you know, or, or, or uh, you know, multitasking or watching a movie. You know, I never watch movies at my house without holding a guitar and practicing. I just can't do it. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I just keep it's in the background, but I'll do legato exercises and uh, you know, and, and those are the things that uh but you know, in the creative process for me like uh like getting sounds now, uh you know, there's so many options in recording and, and so many ways, you know, people can use a DAW system. Uh, you know, it's made recording so much easier. You've got amp software. You just plug in and play. And, you know, drums will, will automatically quantize if you want them to. And, you know, you can tune your voice up and tune a, a, a guitar uh, that, that was played out of tune. But I think it still comes down to one thing. Um, I still think the best people don't need all those tricks. You know, you have to go in and play. And that's why I like to practice so much to be prepared to do the music because I'm always working on music. And what the practice does is prepare me to be on my game to do that, if that makes sense. Okay, terminology. Yeah. Practice means repetition. Yes. Uh, you do the same thing over and over again to improve. So. I believe that what you're doing when you set the metronome to 180 and you are improvising, you are creating riffs, I don't believe that's practice as much as it's what I've been talking about. You're playing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You are playing. Uh, you know, you are not repeating, 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 which is practice. You are playing. Yes. And uh, it's obvious that that is what keeps you in the game and keeps you excited and what you love to do. 
and where you get your joy in playing guitar. Yeah, because it, it goes back to the theory of you practice technique separately, practice music separately, and then you try to merge the two. Eventually, you know, I have a saying, you know, musical people will find a way to make music. And it's that simple that if, if you practice and your technique gets better, a musical person's going to find a way to use that technique. You know, I mean, uh, you just it doesn't mean that every song's going to have a blazing riff, but they're. There's a lot of things that I practice now that I never used to, like nuanced things. For example, downstrokes. Like, I'll just sit there, I'll put the metronome on 220, because that's around Master of Puppets by Metallica, and just go, da 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 all downstrokes. <laughs> you know, um, it's something, I, you know, and I enjoy that. But I, you're right, I, I do the practice, the warm-up, and, and then I change. That's part of my practice routine to do the technique first to warm up and then play music. It's it's part of practicing for me. You know, it's just to sit down and like I keep thinking, you know, when I was in Nitro, Jim and I used to go by this tree we called the music tree. It was right, uh, um, you know, when we lived in Woodland Hills, it was uh, by Topanga Canyon, like right in the foothills there. And we used to sit in this spot and we would just write songs. I mean, Jim was great at that. You know, he would, come, he would always say to me, come on, dude, let's write. You know, I love that about him. <laughs> and uh, I mean, we wrote like 19 or 20 songs for our second album. And we just kept cranking them out. And, and it was a real creative process. We'd demo them. And, and you know, it, it's and, and I guess, you know, that work ethic is still there. Like even when he did Nitro 2, he had a real concept about it. I produced the first album. It did really well. He wanted to do it his way on the second. I just, for lack of a better way to say it, I capitulated. I said, okay, dude, and I, I, I'm going to do it. And I did it. And it was a challenge because he made me play live in the studio. Virtually, there's no punch-ins. It was analog tape. I had to play from start to finish, rhythms and solos at the same time. It was crazy. <laughs> and I loved it. Cool. Yeah. All right, Michael. I'm going to let you get back to your day. I know you got a lot of things uh, happening as well as uh, a live stream at uh, well, 4 Pacific. Uh, I guess that's uh, what's uh, 7 Eastern time. Yeah, 7 so, Eastern. So uh, good mm -hmm. luck with that. Thanks. But yeah, Doug, I think you touched on a really great topic. And, you know, the passion, I, I truly believe, you know, you've got the passion still. I have it. And that that's what keeps, that's what motivates us. You know, I, I really... I, I still really love to play guitar, and, and it's that simple. All right, Michael. I will talk to you later. All right. Thanks, Doug. When practice begins to become boring, what do you do to make it exciting and fun again? Be sure to share your ideas in the comments section below. I already have many suggestions added to a list that weren't discussed in this program, and I plan to share that. I want to add your ideas, so please help me out on that one. Also, let me know if you enjoy the podcast format in the comments. I have really had a blast doing this and hope that you liked it too. If so, I'll do some more. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell for notifications.